So this uh, whole thing uh, came out of um, looking at Trevor Morris's uh, hybrid thinking, uh, going from a big VNR ensemble template thingy to more of a hybrid uh, way of thinking where you add your own presets and uh, his assistants would kind of look through the new uh, sound libraries and find cool sounds for him to either add into his template or not. Um, and since I am my own assistant, I needed to come up with a way to uh, sort these things myself and to kind of be able to uh, grow my template of presets from project to project and bring them with me. So that was um, um, that was the plan. So let me show you uh, what we did yesterday. We made a really cool macro that's gonna um, rename every new preset that I make in in a new project. But my thought would be, I'm I'm gonna make a like a prefix for myself, so that whenever I make a new, let's say, let's go to a new synth. Uh, if we were in exhale, these are not named at all. All right, so um, we did uh, explain the premise for adding a macro and so far we've uh, managed to do this. So number 76, open it up. I'm gonna take you through the different steps. Uh, right now, the first one is transport, go to right locator. Um, that is there only because I need Cubase take some time before doing the other um, commands or in in fact I need this om next to the last one to take some time because it, it didn't do it correctly if if I didn't do that and then this first one go to right locator is just to make sure that this next to last one takes some time so uh, that's why that it's there and then I'm showing every single track in the whole project that's the next thing next thing <coughs> Then I'm unfolding every track because if the tracks aren't unfolded, uh, the tracks inside won't be able to be selected. And then uh, we have a PLE. Uh, we're going to have a close look at this. Does um, selects every track that is contain has a name that contains sifter in all caps, exclamation mark, and then a space and also uh, the track that is equal to Sherlock. So Sherlock is this this guy right here, but it's the first track in the session. So I added that to make sure that uh, what we're gonna do ends up on top of the session. So I can select everything that now has, uh, so, so if we go through and say that this is the sound I wanna add to my uh, main template uh, that might be having uh, plugins on it or uh, have a preset that I've uh, tweaked a little so it's now become my own I'll do sift your space while working right and at the end of the project I could do this to kind of get them <coughs> sorted okay so far so good we have now uh, selected that that selects everything and back into key commands so I've selected everything and then I use the cubase command uh, move selected tracks to new folder and then I have a channel and track visibility agent, which is also part of Cubase, which says show only uh, the selected channels and tracks. And the next one is going to show uh, these tracks. So by doing this command, everything except uh, the selected tracks will be gone. And so I need to get these guys back. So that's how I do that. And then I needed to make Cubase take some time to make this work. And so I made the transport go to project start. And then the last one <coughs> was rename new presets folder. Okay, so let's have a look at that one. This uh, project logical editor preset does the following. It filters uh, based on the name of a new folder that has no name. So then, then it's called just folder with a capital F and container type is equal to folder track. That's just to, to make sure that um, nothing else should be selected. And then we're doing a action that is, uh, so this is set to tra transform first of all, 
and then the name we're going to replace a search string and then para parameter one is what we are searching for parameter two is uh, the new name kind of okay and the last point uh, that is the last point i believe so let's now run the command and see if it works today as well it does <laughs> I think that's very cool and very fun. Uh, so <clears throat> it has now um, brought all my presets from um, from every track that is now 1,800 tracks um, and uh, pulled them in, made them into a new folder. And, and with a, just just looking at my list and, and uh, having a think about now your project, uh, this this could do a lot of cool stuff. So I'm just going to show you the last part for me, which would then be if I uh, started on a new project, so I made a new project out from my template uh, thing, I would then go to import and then import tracks from project. And then I'm going to select <clears throat> um, the ones the one that I uh, just made here. Here you can see uh, that these are now at the top of um, a project. So this was, would probably be the last thing that I do. It, w it won't uh, do anything about the routing or anything. It's just the location in the project. But then it would be really easy for me to just uh, import every um, track that has this and would be important to not not do that one <laughs> because I don't want I don't want multiple Sherlock's in the project but um, then I can import them that that way the template would kind of grow um, from from project to project and I can bring with me the presets that I make and that's a cool thought uh, that I want to start to add to the to the thing